In this video, I'll be covering how to give your weapon some visual particle effects in Unreal Engine 5. These effects will include a muzzle flash, as well as bullet impacts which change depending on the type of surface they hit. This video carries on from my weapon system tutorial series, which if you're not up to date, I'll link the first video on the screen now, as well as in the video description. So without further ado, let's set up some particle systems. All the effects we need can be found in this free realistic starter VFX pack which is found on the FAB store. I have included a link to this in the video description. To download it, you can just select the free license, then click add to my library. Next, open the Epic Games launcher. Then in your library, search for the VFX pack. Next, click add to project. Then select the one you want to import it to. Then click add to project again. Now, if you open your project, then go to the content browser, you will see that this VFX pack has now been imported. And now we're free to use any of these particle effects. We're going to start by adding a muzzle flash to our weapon, which is very easy to do. So open the content browser and go to your weapons folder. Here we want to open our base weapon. This blueprint is the parent of all of our weapons, so any functionality we add will be used by all of them. So that's why we want to set up our particle systems here. We'll start by making some space just after the create shot trace event. This event is triggered every time a bullet is shot. So we want to spawn our muzzle flash particles here. So drag off the event and search for a spawn emitter attached. The reason we're using this and not the spawn emitter at location is because if the player is moving, we want the particles to be attached to the weapon. Next, go to the emitter template dropdown and select the explosion big A particle system. Next, we want to attach this to the end of the barrel of the gun where the muzzle flash would occur. So for that, we can use our shoot arrow, which we're using for the start point of our bullet line trace. So connect that to the attach to component pin. Then add some reroute nodes to keep things organized. To see if these particles are spawning, just compile and save, then go back to the viewport and press play. If you pick up a weapon and press the shoot input, you will see that the explosion particle system is spawning. However, it is way too big. So to make it smaller, go back to the base weapon blueprint. Then on the spawn emitter node, reduce the scale down to 0.03. Make sure to set this value to X, Y, and Z. Now if we compile and save, then go back to the viewport and press play. The explosion particles should now be a more accurate size. However, you will notice that when you shoot, there's this bright flash, as well as some smoke particles that we want to remove. So to get rid of these, open up the explosion particle effect. Under impact, we want to deselect the light, which will remove that bright flash. We also want to deselect the shock wave and main, as well as the parts and smoke. This will leave us with a particle system that works perfectly for a muzzle flash. If you go back to the viewport and press play, you will see that our muzzle flash is looking a bit more realistic. Next, we're going to work on adding a system that spawns particles on the objects that our bullets hit. We'll start by spawning the same particles for every bullet impact. Then we'll move on to improving it so that different particles spawn depending on what type of object is hit. So we can start by closing this, then going to the base weapon blueprint. Here we want to drag our apply damage across. Then drag off our for each loop and search for a spawn emitter at location. For the emitter template, you can use any of the destruction particle systems. So I'm just going to use this destruction ceramic. Next, we want to spawn this at the location where the line trace detects that an object has been hit. So expand the break hit result, then drag off the location and connect it to the location pin on the spawn emitter. Next, I'm going to decrease all the scale values to 0.4. This should now be working, so compile and save, then go back to the viewport and press play. If you shoot one of the enemies, you'll see that the particles spawn where the line trace hits them. However, if you shoot any other objects, no particles spawn in. This is because at the moment our line trace is only set to detect pawn objects. So we need to allow the line trace to detect other types of objects. So open up the base weapon, then move over to the make array node. Next, click add pin. The walls in our level are static objects, so I'm just going to leave this set to world static. Now if we compile and save, then go back to the viewport and press play, everything we shoot should be spawning our impact particles. 
Next we're going to make it so that different particles are spawned depending on the type of object we shoot. So for example, if we shoot a brick wall, shards of brick would come flying off. Or if we shoot something metal, sparks might fly off. For the different object types, I'm going to add some cubes into the level. To detect what material the object is made out of, we're going to use tags. We can basically set a tag to something like wood or metal, so that when the line trace shot from the gun hits an object, it can use the tag to determine what particles to spawn. With the cube selected, go to the details panel and search for tags. Click the add button to add a new tag. We want to name it something that will tell us what the object is made out of, so I'm just going to name this one brick. Next, if you hold Alt and drag the cube across, you can duplicate it. With the new one selected, I'm going to change the tag to metal. Next, I'm going to create another one, which I'm going to name its tag wood. Finally, I'm going to create one more and give it the tag glass. Now that you've done this, go back to the base weapon. Here we're going to set up the logic which receives the tag, then spawns the corresponding particle system. I'll start by deleting the spawn emitter at location node, then reconnecting the for each loop to the apply damage. Next, in some space, we want to right click and create a custom event. Name this spawn hit particles. Next, we want to add a couple inputs to this. So click the add input button, then name this one tag name. This will pass through the name of the tag from the object we hit. So make sure the type is set to name. Next, add another input and call this one location. This is for the location where we want to spawn the particle system. So set the type to vector. Next, we want to go back up and drag off the for each loop and search for our spawn hit particle event. Now we need to plug in the values. So we'll start by getting the tag name of the object we hit. So drag off the hit actor and search for get tags. This returns an array of all the tags that an object might have. However, we only added one tag to our objects and it's in the first slot of the array. So we can drag off this and search for a get copy. We can leave this set to zero as zero is the first element of the array, which is where our tag is. Now we can just connect this to the tag name pin. For the location, we can just expand the break hit result, then connect the two location pins. Next, go back down to the spawn hit particles event. We're just going to check that our tags are being passed through when we hit an object. So drag off the event and add a print string, then connect it to the tag name pin. If you compile and save, then go back to the viewport and press play. It should now print the tag of the object that you hit in the top left corner of the screen. As you can see, the correct tags are being printed. However, you can see that none is also being printed. This is because the line trace is also detecting the wall behind these cubes, which does not have a tag set. Next, we're going to set up spawning different particles for each object type. So go back to the base weapon, then drag off the tag name pin and search for a switch on name. This node allows us to choose an outcome depending on the tag name it receives. We want to add four different outcomes because that's how many material tags we've used. If you select the node, then go to the details panel, we can start to name these outcomes. We want to give them the exact names we used for the tags. Now that we've done this, we want to right click on the graph and re-add our spawn emitter at location node. Next, we want to right click on the emitter template and promote it to a variable. Name this hit particles. Move this out the way, then we want to drag the variable into the graph and set it. Connect this to our first brick outcome, then set it to the destruction concrete particle system. We're going to do the same for the rest of the outcomes to set the variable to the corresponding particle system. So copy and paste it below, then connect it to the metal pin. Then go to the drop down and set it to the destruction metal. Do the same again, this time setting it to the destruction wood. Then set this one to the destruction glass. Finally, the default pin is used for when the object hit does not have a tag. So it's often useful to set it to a default particle system so that an impact visual event is always shown when an object is shot 
even if it doesn't have a tag. So I'm just going to set this to the destruction ceramic. Next we want to connect all of these to the spawn emitter at location node. Then finally connect up the location pins. So this system will basically receive the tag from the object hit, then set the hit particle variable to the corresponding particle effect, then spawn in those particles at the location where the object was hit. Also I would quickly decrease the scale to 0 0.4. Now if you compile and save, then go back to the viewport and press play, if you pick up a weapon and shoot the different cubes, you will see that different particle effects are spawning at the location of the hit. Currently, when you shoot the enemies, the default particles are spawning. So I'm going to go through how you can add some blood particle effects to show where the enemy's been hit. Like before, I'm going to select all the enemies, then give them a tag. I'm going to name this tag enemy. Next I'm going to open the base weapon blueprint, then add a new pin to the switch on name node. I'm going to name this the same as the tag and call it enemy. Next I'm going to copy the set hit particles variable and paste it below. Set this to the blood splat cone which is also in the starter VFX pack. Then connect it to the enemy pin. And also connect it to the spawn emitter. If we compile and save, then go back to the viewport and press play. If we shoot an enemy, you can see that the blood is spawning, however it's firing straight upwards. So that it's realistic, we want to make it so that the blood comes out in the direction that the bullet has come from. So to do this, we need to set the rotation of the particle system. So if I open up the base weapon, then go to the viewport, you can see that we have this arrow, which we're using to set the direction that the bullet is travelling in. So we can use this to calculate the rotation that our particle system needs to be. So go back to the event graph and select our spawn hit particles event. We're going to add another input which we'll call arrow rotation. Set the type to a rotator. We need to pass the rotation of the arrow when the bullet shot into this event. So if we come over here we can get it from the get world rotation of the arrow. So just connect it into the arrow rotation. Now if you come back down, you can plug the arrow rotation into the rotation pin on the spawn emitter. If you compile and save, then go back to the viewport and press play. If we shoot the enemy, you'll see that the particles are still moving upwards. To fix this, we need to rotate its pitch by 90 degrees. So go back to the base weapon, then drag off the arrow rotation pin and search for a break rotator. This separates the rotator into a roll, pitch and yaw. So all we want to do is drag off the pitch and search for an add. Then we just want to add 90. Next we want to recombine this into a rotator, so drag off and search for a make rotator. We want to plug this back into the pitch, then also connect up the roll and yaw. Then we can just plug this back into the rotation pin. Now we can quickly go up to our multi-line trace node and set the draw debug type to none. Then we can just compile and save, then go back to the viewport and press play, where now you'll see that the blood is moving in the correct direction. You should now have a full set of particle effects for your weapon system, including a muzzle flash as well as material specific bullet impacts. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button and comment below what you'd like me to cover in future videos. In the next video, I'll be covering an ammunition and reload system. So hit subscribe and click the bell to be notified when that video is released. If you'd like some personal assistance with these videos or your own Unreal projects, check out my Patreon in the description below. Thank you so much for watching.